Hey guys, good morning and welcome to a special edition episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute with Aprilia's 2021 RS660. That's right, we're in Santa Barbara, California for the official US press introduction of Aprilia's new mid-sized everyday man sport bike. So let's throw the helmet on and go for a ride. All right guys, here it is. Prius 2021 RS660. This is an all new mid sized sport bike from the Aprilia factory out of Noelle, Italy. Now, this motorcycle is big news because Aprilia has been manufacturing sport bikes forever. But until now, they've never had a mid sized sport bike. Of course, they've become famous for their RS V4 1100 Superbike, which originally debuted, I think, for the 2008 model year in RS V4 1000 trim. Uh, predating that, they had the Mille Sport Bike. They had the all kinds of sport bikes in the 1000 category, and even in the 250cc two-stroke category, but never in the mid-size four-stroke category. Enter the RS660. This isn't a competition sport bike spec machine, though. Unlike the RSV4, which is designed for world superbike competition, this is an everyday man's sport bike. Think Ducati Super Sport. Think KTM. 790 Duke. That is where this motorcycle is positioned. But enough talking about this motorcycle. Let's swing a leg over it and see what it's like to ride. All right, guys, a good old fashioned mechanical key. Thank God. Let's just whip around here and get off and running. We're in Santa Barbara, California right now, so it's a little bit foggy and misty. Typical marine layer morning in this seaside Southern California community. But enough talking about where we are, let's talk about the RS660. Sitting on this motorcycle, it feels, well, like a sport bike. Clip-on style handlebar, skinny between the knees. An aggressive riding stance, but not overly so but still definitely not as relaxed as a standard motorcycle. Still, Aprilia has been doing a good job as of late in the ergonomics engineering department. The Tuano 1000 and Tuano V4 1100 are very accommodating ergonomics package, packages for high performance sport bikes. And this thing, is fairly accommodating. We spent about 130 miles on this motorcycle and didn't have much discomfort. The seat is thick and well supported. There's also room for a passenger. This windscreen does a good job of blocking the air and pushing it up over the rider. I'm six foot tall. I'm a big human and I fit decently on this bike. The foot pegs are a little high in my opinion. They are a little high. They're not as relaxed as say uh, a KTM Duke Street bike, but still not bad at all. Definitely could ride this bike for a full day and not be in full discomfort. Engine. This machine is powered by Aprilia's all-new 659cc parallel twin, liquid-cooled parallel twin, eight-valve cylinder head. Now, what, what Aprilia's done with this engine is they basically took the RSV4 1100 engine and removed two cylinders. This engine same, shares the exact same bore measurement as the RSV4, but with more piston stroke. That is how they arrived at the 659cc displacement. Gear driven camshafts, just like the RSV4. And when you're riding this bike, it's got that RSV4 character. That guttural tone that the engine, that that engine's known for is alive and well in this engine configuration. I was also 
when I first started riding this bike yesterday, I wasn't, I didn't expect much. I'm like, oh, it's just going to be another parallel twin. Ah, everyone's making those these days. But this thing is is special. Prilly did a good job engineering their, their charismatic V4 feeling into this compact uh, twin here. Brake stuck, light was just on. I was dragging my rear brake, so that's what happened. I am a habitual rear brake dragger. I can't help it. Back to the engine. Aprilia says this engine's good for right around 100 horsepower at the inside the engine. At the back tire, I'd say it's right around 84, 85 horsepower at the business end of the Pirelli Diablo Rosso 2 tire which isn't bad it's got enough pep to get the blood moving but it's not so fast where it's going to scare you now this motorcycle has a plethora of electronics Aprilia was an early leader in the ride by wire which is throttle calibration between the throttle twist tube and the engine so they were doing that I think if I remember correctly back in their pre rsv 4 like the Mille Superbike had ride by wire throttle if I remember correctly but anyways they've been doing it for a very long time and the ride by wire throttle on this bike is very well calibrated it's natural feeling it's smooth you know, you can do wheelies on it, and it's not too herky-jerky, so good job, Aprilia. They have three combined engine power and throttle response modes, one, two, and three. I prefer the most aggressive setting because this engine just doesn't pump out a lot of power. So you really have to maximize the, the few amount of ponies it has by using that highest power setting. Usually when you have those high power settings, it gives a throttle response that is too twitchy and too perky-jerky, but on this machine, that is not the case. Other electronics. This thing, like we said, Aprilia was an early leader in the ride by wire department. They also have done very good with traction control. When they overhauled their Superbike traction control for, I think it was the 2012 model year, they took a big step ahead of the competition. Big step. And ever since, their Superbike electronics have been atop the class. Well, those electronics have trickled down onto the RS660. We've got traction control, we have wheelie control, we have engine brake control, and we have ABS. Now, because of the mellow amount of power this engine has, realistically, it doesn't even need traction control. Uh, when I was riding this bike, I put it in the very least restrictive minimum setting, and even in that setting, the engine doesn't have enough torque to really get that rear tire uh, uh, moving around. But still, it's nice that Aprilia has fitted that system on its motorcycle for when you're riding in the slippery roads or partially slippery ro roads like today. But realistically, a 659cc parallel twin does not need traction control. It doesn't have the torque to facilitate that kind of tire spin. Back to the electronics, what I do really like in this setting that I did enjoy using yesterday was the Aprilia engine brake control. Engine brake control is when the electronics automatically feed fuel into the engine to help control deacceleration due to compression engine braking. Now, I'm generally not a big engine braking fan. I like the motorcycle to freewheel into the corners, especially at the circuit. You know, when we're riding on the street, a little bit of engine braking is okay to me just because it lets you slide the back end and do skids, and that's fun. But because this engine doesn't have a ton of power, you really want to maximize its, its cornering speed. And to do that, you have to disable engine, you have to have a little amount of engine brake, and you can do that in the electronics. I put the engine brake setting to the most minimum effect, which allowed the bike to free wheel into the corners very nicely, keep my corner speed up a little bit more. 
Uh, the difference between the le least engine brake setting and the highest engine brake setting, there's actually quite a big difference between those settings, So, which is nice. So if you're someone who wants to have more engine braking, you could boost that up in a three level increment. So good job, Aprilia, it's a really nice setting. ABS, I also really like the brakes and ABS system on this motorcycle. Now a lot of motorcycles, ABS is always on and fixed. You can't have any fun, you can't do any skids, you can't do anything. Well on this bike, it has adjustable ABS built into the electronics so you can tune the ABS and you can manually disable rear ABS, which is a big deal. So you can do slides coming into corners and most importantly you can do endos, you can do nose wheelies on this motorcycle and I love nose wheelies. And thank God the front fork on this motorcycle actually does really good when it comes to nose wheelies. And it's really good for that because it doesn't have a lot of stiction. So that small amount of, of bind you have when the fork compresses, this fork doesn't have a lot of that. It's very smooth in terms of its action, almost maybe too smooth. So smooth that when you're using the front brake, it gets low in its stroke pretty quick. I wish there was some added compression dampening just to hold that thing up higher. That would be a nice setting, in my opinion. We'll go this way, guys. But still, very good braking system. Uh, while we're speaking of the fork, the fork is definitely a little bit lighter sprung. I'm 190 pounds right now. I'm a big boy. I've been really enjoying this COVID thing where I just eat my face off. So I'm heavy right now. For a 190 pound rider, the spring rate is a little on the light side and the compression dampening is a little bit light too. Rebound dampening is good though. We didn't actually even touch a clicker. Rebound dampening adjustment is offered as a spring preload on the fork. The shock offers the both the same settings, but you do have to remove a plastic cover to get at the rebound dampening adjuster on the shock. Rear suspension. This motorcycle operates through a linkless rear suspension where the shock connects directly to the frame and the swing arm. I'm typically not a big fan of linkage-less rear suspension packages. You always have to give up some kind of compromise when you have a traditional linkage-less suspension package, usually. But this suspension on this bike works really good. I'm actually really impressed with how well Aprilia engineers dialed that in. The rear suspension goes over bumps very nice. It does not deliver a harsh ride whatsoever, yet still has good sporting feel uh, through turns when you're railing around turns. We spent a good amount of time carving up pristine Southern California pavement, and this thing handles really well. 400 pounds with a full 3.96 gallons of fuel in it, and it's a very agile motorcycle. It goes where you want, it steers easily when you're leaned over on the side of the tire it feels very connected to the pavement uh, if you're someone who really likes to to just haul ass through turns you're gonna like this bike a lot and with its friendly engine dynamic it's a motorcycle that you can ride very hard without it worrying it about it biting you. You gotta remember, bikes like the RSV 41100, these things are high performance, ultra high performance sport bikes. And if you don't really know what you're doing, that bike can bite you. Even when you do know what you're doing, the bike can bite you. This bike, much more friendly. So good job on the suspension. You know, it really doesn't come as a big surprise that this bike would handle so well. Aprilia takes great pride in engineering its chassis. If you can remember over the years, Aprilia frames and swing arms have always been these polished, polished works of aluminum that just look awesome. And Aprilia is continuing that high-end 
chassis engineering today. So good job. This bike has a very good chassis, very good suspension, very impressive. All right. We talked about the electronics. We talked about the traction control, engine brake, ABS, wheelie control. It's nice it has it, but realistically, this motorcycle doesn't really have enough power to make big wheelies. Uh, traction control. All bikes with ride-by-wire should have traction control, and this thing has it. Speed limit's 30. Let's set the cruise. Maybe we have to be going faster, I think. You hold down this button, which turns it on, and then you hold it down again, and then it's on. It's on. We had it on for a second. Thank God. Cruise control is a great feature on these motorcycles. Just makes riding so much more enjoyable when you don't have to worry about the speed and all that nonsense. Six-speed gearbox with a chain final drive on the left-hand side. This gearbox also includes Aprilia's electronic quick shifter. So it's got an electronic quick shifter so you can up and down shift wirelessly without the clutch. You just press down on the lever and it down shifts, up on the lever and it up shifts. Now we're riding it in standard configuration which is one down, five up. If you wanted to put it in race configuration, you can but you have to purchase some kind of software upgrade from Aprilia in which they program the computer that now you're going to use the shift mechanism in uh, a one up, five down format, which is interesting that you have to pay for that. But it's still nice that Aprilia offers it uh, as an OE option for you riders who want to have normal shifting, we'll say. LED lighting front and back on this RS660. We didn't get a chance to see how this bike rode at night. We were recording this from the official North America press introduction of the RS660. When we're at these functions, we can't just do whatever we want. We're held by, by our host being Aprilia by their timetable and time schedule. So we can't just gallivant and do what we want and do the wheelie test and do this and do that. So they were gracious enough to let us film this special edition MC commute from Santa Barbara. Look how beautiful it is, guys. Can you believe it? Wow, look at these palm trees. So we're very happy to do it. All right, cruise control. Let's try it again. Come on, cruise control. Don't choke in front of the camera. Well, I can't make it work, guys, but it was working yesterday. So, very nice bike from Aprilia. This is a comfortable, around town, realistic sport bike. The engine's not too powerful. Chassis accurate, stable, good suspension. But this is by no means a competition spec motorcycle. If you're looking for something that's really going to wake the neighbors, this isn't a bike to do it. But if you're looking for a realistic sport bike that you can ride on the street and have a good time, it's not going to bite you. This RS660 is pretty good. Alright guys, we're going to jump on the freeway here in a moment and tell you what that's like. And then we're going to wrap things up. All right, guys, here we are getting on the freeway. Feel that power. Love the way this engine sounds. Real quick, while we're talking, the clutch, cable actuated clutch. I really like this clutch. It has good feel. The lever pull isn't too, too firm, isn't too light. The clutch works very well. All right, guys, we're cruising here at 65 miles per hour in top gear, pulling around 4,500 RPM. Love the guttural sound of this engine. There is some vibration through the controls, but it's not excessive. It's not off-putting. It's pretty well-tuned and adds to the riding experience. Let's see if we can get cruise control to work. There we go. Cruise control works, guys. Look, no hands. Cruise control's on. 
thank God. I love cruise control. So definitely decently comfortable riding position. You could spend all day logging miles on this thing and not be in full discomfort. Like that the engine has a good amount of torque. So rather than having to wind up the engine through downshifts, you can just short shift it in the top gear and use that, ride that wave of torque to get to where you want to be. Very nice. Let's pass this guy. Instrumentation. This LCD panel Aprilia has adopted on some of its other high-end motorcycles. And while I like this color display, it's so big. So this display is so big, yet the actual legible color display area is so small. And everything is condensed. There's a ton of information here, but it's all just condensed where it's kind of hard to read. It would be nice if Aprilia could open up this whole space outside of this LCD and, and make that actual legible color space. That would be a neat feat, in my opinion. Switch gear works very well. I like the fit and finish of the switch gear. I like that to adjust the all the electronics use this button right that's below the starter button before everything was integrated into the starter button which made for a little bit of a herky jerky experience so good job Aprilia at updating the switch gear and getting it more uh, contemporary fuel mileage we registered right around 48 miles per gallon yesterday and that was during mostly high speed, or as high speed as this bike's capable of riding conditions. 3.96 gallon fuel tank on this RS660, which is kind of small. You know, bigger fuel tanks are always better, so you can carry more fuel and go farther. But still decently uh, adequate fuel economy on this motorcycle especially considering its fun factor that squeak you guys may hear guys that's coming from the rear brake for whatever reason that rear brake squeaks but I do like that rear brake because it has a double piston setup a lot of these rear brakes these days are just one piston uh, set up on the one side and then a flat backing plate on the other this one actually has pistons on both sides which I like Back on the freeway, again, decently comfortable riding position. I like the, the engine vibration isn't off-putting, and this is a bike that you could easily log some mileage on and have a good time. And that auto blip down shifter, gosh, I love bikes with that feature. That just makes life so much better during deacceleration, especially when you are cornering. I like that guy, I like the way he drives. All right guys, let's wrap this thing up. That was a fun little fast commute style ride on the RS660 twin from Aprilia. All right guys, there she is, Aprilia's 2021 RS660. That was a fun, quick, special edition MC commute on this latest street-orientated middleweight sport bike from Aprilia. I really like this engine. Obviously, the RSV4 engine rules. Uh, this engine cut in half in form of the 659cc parallel twin is awesome as well chassis aprilia 
if there's one thing they know how to do, it's build chassis. Chassis on this bike is great. The suspension was operated much better than I expected, so good job, Aprilia. Brakes, this thing does great endos. I love that. I love that you can disable rear ABS. All in all, a very nice road-orientated sport bike from our from Aprilia. Would I spend my $11,300 on this motorcycle? I probably personally wouldn't. You know, these road-going sport bikes are nice, but I'd rather just have a sport bike, sport bike. Uh, that way, you can have the maximum track grade performance on the street. Uh, I also am a fan of multi-cylinder configurations. Not that this isn't a multi, because it is, because it's a parallel twin, but when you can buy a motorcycle with four cylinders for right around the same price, I'm going to gravitate towards that. Still, if you're looking for an ultra high-tech middleweight sport bike with all the electronic doodads and goodies, something that looks cool, something that's unique, something that's from Aprilia, this RS660 might be a good option for you. That's a wrap, guys. Make sure to surf on over to MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where all of my written content goes, including the review of this RS660. Make sure to thumbs up this video if you liked it. Thumbs it down if you didn't. And we'll see you guys next time, maybe. Thanks for watching.